Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant, and I'm here to talk about the alien story. This episode forms a part of my series on all of the lore and history of Elite Dangerous. The alien history and interaction within the galaxy is fairly extensive. Much of that has occurred over the past few centuries. However, since the dawn of the year 3303, there has been a renewed interest and activity on the alien subjects. Here, I document some of the more significant events. The first alien relic to be discovered was found over a thousand years ago on Mars. The origin of this relic remains a complete mystery even in the years of 3300. However, that was not to be the only relic ever found. In the early months of 3301, after following up on numerous rumours and largely spearheaded by Dr. Arcanon, commanders began a massive hunt for an object of unknown origin. The object had been classified as an unknown artefact. After many extensive hunts, the first of these were discovered by Commander Wishblend, who unfortunately failed to capture it. This was later followed by a successful capture by Commander Red Wizard in the Tomokani system during early May of 3301. For the longest of times, unknown artifacts were an extremely rare find despite being highly sought after. However, eventually many more of these artifacts were discovered, some free floating in space and others, more often than not, found being carried by convoys in deep space. The unknown artifact is extremely alien in design, and initial theories suggest it being anything from an alien life form to a stasis pod or even some form of advanced hyperdrive. Aside from its unique design, the artifact also broadcasts an unusual alien sound. In July of 3301, commanders made a huge breakthrough and discovered that embedded within the artifact's audio was hidden Morse code. When translated, it was revealed that the Morse code was broadcasting the artifact's location by means of designation of the local star. Over the coming months, many more unknown artifacts were to be discovered. Many of these were sold to stations around inhabited space. In October of 3301, mysteriously, stations began reporting outages and technical difficulties. This began in the Wakushani system, but soon spread to other locations. By November, commanders had begun to realize that the station's technological failures were linked to the presence of unknown artifacts. After this time, commanders led by a group, Canon Research, made public request that all the sounds of unknown artifacts to stations be stopped. During the period of research on the unknown artifacts, numerous things were discovered. At some point, it was found that the artifacts had changed behavior, and instead of scanning the local stellar body, they now scanned any ships that approached within one kilometers. The artifacts were also found to align themselves within space and point towards the Merope system. Later, recordings and decoding of the audio found that the audio translated to a basic line drawing of the ship that it had scanned. When inside the cargo hold of a ship, the artifacts produce a toxic corrosion effect which eats away at the ship's systems. Eventually, it will either eat its way through the cargo hold and be sucked out of the ship, or it will cause extensive ship malfunction. Unknown artifacts which are destroyed leave behind an unknown fragment. These seem to be highly prized and sought after by Professor Palin, an expert in alien research. Putting his research to good use, Professor Palin has developed a corrosive resistant cargo rack that would allow the unknown artifacts to be carried without any damage or problems. The full nature and origin of the unknown artifacts still will remain a mystery, and despite the discovery of further alien-like objects that bear striking similarities, no further discoveries have been made regarding the origin of these artifacts. However, as of 3303, these artifacts were found in abundance around the planetary wreckage of unknown ships. Ships crashed and of apparent alien design.
Although seemingly not directly alien related, the events behind the disappearance of Starship One contain enough unknowns to lead many people to speculate on alien involvement. At the time of the occurrence, Starship One was a Narwhal class liner that served as a presidential ship for Jasmina Halsey, the former president of the Federation. In late May of 3301, the Galnet News Network announced that Starship One had disappeared in an apparent hyperspace accident. The entire crew and all passengers, including both the President and the Vice President, were eventually presumed dead. Secretary of State Felicia Winters took over as Acting President, and on 2nd of June, Shadow President Zachary Husden was voted in as the new President of the Federation. Many theories were put forward as to the reasons behind Starship's one disappearance, and after a brief investigation, the Federation claimed a rare FSD malfunction was the cause. However, many disbelieved this reasoning, citing numerous conspiracies up to and including alien involvement, despite the fact that aliens have not been seen nor heard from in many decades. Eventually, in February of 3302, a search for the wreckage resulted in successfully retrieving Starship One debris. It is unknown why such a search was put off for so long. However, among the debris was found an escape capsule which contained the cryogenically frozen Jasmina Halsey. She was alive and well, and over a short period, she fully recovered. She had scant few details to share on the disappearance of Starship One. However, Numerous associates made claims of changed behaviour from the former president. In fact, she later went on to make a public request for exploration data to prove her claims of super-intelligent alien beings who had rescued her from hyperspace. Her words on these beings are as follows. They are out there. I have seen them. We must put aside our petty differences and work together to establish contact. There is so much we could learn from them. Although at the time, she was being kept at Clearwater Psychiatric Centre, she was eventually given the full clear and released. In September of 3302, Halsey made further claims of an alien nature with the following statement. I saw a place of extraordinary beauty, a paradise. It was truly wonderful. This was no dream. It was a glimpse of something very real. We must find this place. It could be our future. Some decried her state of mind, wondering if she had truly recovered from her ordeal. Since her rescue, Halsey has worked with a low profile, maintaining an active interest in helping humanity and providing humanitarian aid. In the months leading up to 3303, a number of people with public profiles have put forth the theory that humanity has been infiltrated by alien agents. A theory bolstered by recent sightings of what appear to be alien ships. Although many have found this idea to be far-fetched, President Zachary Hudson has not been so quick to dismiss these claims. In a statement released on Galnet, he said, Some believe that aliens have infiltrated the Empire. An improbable claim? Maybe. But then again, maybe not. After all, we are almost certainly dealing with an extremely advanced species. Who knows what they are capable of? Whilst it would be unfair to say that Jasmina Halsey is now an agent of alien influence, the idea that a hidden hand has been working behind human affairs cannot be discounted. Theories on the extent of such a conspiracy range from the select few lone agents working in isolation to the far-reaching hands of institutional and massively influential networks having been undermined by alien hands. The Pleiades Nebula has been a constant source of speculation regarding the alien presence and indeed alien activity. Due to the fact that the unknown artifacts for a long while pointed at the system Merope within the Pleiades, it was assumed that this system would be significant. On 14th of January 3302, a commander by the name of Octo 
made a massive discovery. A huge organic structure growing on the surface of the moon Merope 5C. This organic structure, completely alien in nature, remains a mystery. The people of the galaxy have come to call these structures barnacles due to their resemblance to the sea-based creature of the same name found on Earth. Since the first discovery, numerous other barnacles have been found on other planets and indeed within other star systems. It is thought that barnacles can only exist within nebula, although the reasons for this remain unknown. The barnacles emit a sound not too dissimilar to the sound produced by the unknown artifact. However, with this sound, it seems almost alive. It is not known if the barnacles and the unknown artifact are directly related. The barnacles are often surrounded by pointed spire-like growths on which sometimes flower-like elements can be found. When destroyed, these spires leave behind a type of meta-alloy. This meta-alloy is of direct interest to the superpowers of the galaxy and some suspect it to possess numerous special properties. The meta-alloys are directly capable of repairing damage to human technology caused by the unknown artifacts. The meta-alloys are also of significant interest to Professor Palin. Whilst much still remains unknown regarding the barnacles, it has been suggested that they are perhaps an earlier life form. What this means precisely remains unclear, but the implication could be that the barnacles perhaps evolve into a further, as yet unseen, stage. Check out my YouTube channel for further videos on the alien story and be sure to check back often for all lore related videos. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.